Okay, so we can see now that this installation happened completely isolated to our user's profile. All of our registry keys and COM registrations are in HKEY current user, and our files are in a new standardized location in the profile of the user who did the installation. We're going to backtrack a little bit now and do an install of the package to the per machine uh, level so that we can see that the same exact package can install per machine and have all of its resources go uh, to the per machine locations. Uh, we're just going to do an uninstall here. And our uninstall is complete. We'll switch to an administrator user. We won't be logging on as the actual administrator of the machine. It's important in Windows Vista and Windows 7 not to use the official administrator account because UAC is not enabled for this account. It's better to create an admin user account that is actually an administrator, but one that you've created explicitly. This way UAC is in, in force for them and you get a true test of how administrative users would work in your environment. We can see over here that we've logged in as a user named admin user. Uh, we can see also that our UAC is enabled and the UAC settings are at their vanilla defaults. We'll open a command prompt and do a similar operation as we did earlier. We're going to use the all users equals one property. Now it's important to force all users to one. If we use, uh, leave all users out, we will be prompted with a UAC dialog and we will sort of get a per machine install, but it's not the same as using all users equal one. We'll take a look at that in the next demo. Also, it's handy to use QB plus here because if we need a UAC dialog, we'll get that UAC dialog and be able to answer it, but we won't have to answer most of the other dialogs in the installation. If I was to use a QN here, uh, running the install would suppress the UAC prompt and because I have to have UAC to accomplish this installation, uh, the installation would fail. So here's our UAC prompt. We're going to answer yes. And our installation completes successfully. Now that our installation is complete, let's take a look at where our resources went. First we'll look at the old location that we saw uh, for per user installed applications. And we can see here that our desktopengineer.com directory is not there. Uh, now we'll take a look at uh, program files. And right here close to the top, we can see that our desktopengineer.com uh, sample folder is uh, in per machine. So our files ended up in per machine. The actual package is coded for the files to go to the um, C program files. But Windows Installer packages are always soft-coded with regard to file location. So because of that, it's fairly easy for Windows Installer to redirect those to the profile without any special package coding. Let's take a look at our registry. Uh, first, we'll take a look at our current user registry. And we'll look under the software key. We can see we do not have a desktopengineer.com key, nor do we under the classes key. And if we look in local machine, we'll find that we do indeed have those registry keys. Here's our regular uh, software key and our COM registration. So everything is successfully shifted to the per machine side. And uh, this is what we're looking to do. So the per user application capability lets us use one package to accomplish both of these objectives. Now I'd like to take a look at what might happen if you would make what I would consider to be the most likely mistake uh, with all of this. First of all, we'll uh, uninstall our package. And to me, if you're trying to do a, a per user install, the most uh, likely mistake you would make is to use MSI install per user, but forget that you really need to be uh, using uh, all users equals two. So we're going to turn on MSI install per user. What actually happens here is because all users is null, it's not set to two, MSI install per user is ignored. So you could view this command line as if we didn't even put MSI install per user there. Uh, in Windows, since Vista, 
anytime a package is run with no special properties for controlling per user per machine, Vista prompts, Vista and Windows 7 will prompt for UAC and do kind of a default legacy uh, per user install. So I'm going to run this package, get the UAC prompt, which if I was, you know, being careful, I would realize, hey, I shouldn't be getting that prompt. Of course, if I'm running this package uh, pre-elevated, I wouldn't get the prompt anyway. Uh, so if I was running through my software distribution system, we don't have the prompt, so we could make this mistake more easily uh, if we have automated or batch systems. So I'm going to say yes here, and our installation completes. This has done a legacy per machine install. So now if I take a look at C colon program files, I see my folder. So I'm thinking, hey, I'm in good shape. I got a per machine install. Unfortunately, though, when the registry is soft coded uh, for um, the the classes root or the com registrations and the software keys, when we do the legacy kind of per user, which is an all users is null, we end up with our registry keys in current user. So we have current user software desktop engineer com as well as our COM registrations are under current user. So unfortunately, the all users equaling null uh, creates a, a mixed mode or a blended uh, mode between the two. I should also mention that if you've disabled UAC in your environment, um, Windows install or Windows uh, Vista and Windows 7 will ignore per user COM registrations. So it's as if they're not even there, and it's kind of a security measure so that if there's no UAC prompting going on, then someone can't sneak a COM registration in for a standard piece of uh, software and cause code, malicious code, to be executed, uh, which was a, a hack that was uh, possible before Windows Vista. Uh, so that might be another concern with uh, implementing per user applications. My name is Darwin Sonoy and this is a brief tour of CSIWindows.com. CSI Windows stands for Concise Systems Internals, and it embodies our approach to teaching about Windows internals. Applications are the reason that our entire computing infrastructure exists, but keeping them running and healthy can be a big challenge for anyone. Put simply, our concise approach focuses our classes on the 20% of Windows internals that make 80% of the difference to keeping applications running smoothly. Let's take a look at the site. Under About, we have some information about our concise approach and how it guides our classroom and courseware development. Under Who Attends, we have information about each of the roles that may benefit from the training. When you click on a role, we have additional information about some of the hot-button issues you might be facing in your job and trying to get your hands around Windows internals. Under Activities and Projects, we have information about the specific projects or activities that you may be involved in that can benefit directly from this training. We have a section that's dedicated to managers and team leads to help them understand how this can be a great team competency and also to understand how it reduces costs and increases the value of your team to your company. Under courses we have information on the individual courses. Uh, we have five classes offered currently and we'll be adding to that list. Our foundations courses is a good example of uh, how the course breakdown goes. We have an outline here that shows you the details of what's covered, which tools are used, details about the length and cost, as well as what is included in the labs and templates. When you go over to classroom, you find information on what you get with the class. We also talk about how we make sure that your classroom experience is a quality experience, one that you're going to best learn by, even if it's online or live. We also talk about how our classroom is designed to engage you. Staying engaged in training can be difficult, and even more so when it's online. So we have taken special steps to make sure that you have the best possible experience. Our alumni portal is going to provide you with ongoing access to resources and training, including monthly meetings, a toolkit, and additional downloads. If you check out our blog section, we have information about the latest tools, techniques, and other information for testing your applications. Our feeds and mail section will allow you to stay connected to our training schedules or any of our other information in whatever way that you prefer. CSIWindows.com is your destination for concise Windows internals knowledge and skills for supporting your applications.